Pastor, how you doing? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. I have to let my locks breathe. Well, it's about that time now, and we, we, we promised to get started exactly at 12 and in exactly at 1. Now, the questions we're going to reserve for the last 10 minutes of the class. Uh, we're not opposed to questions, but we only have an hour. So for the last 10 minutes, we'll devote to questions. And Sister Simon is uh, passing out the outlines the new outlines. Now we're going to start today on page five. Now do you have page five? If not, why let me know. We're looking at uh, you got to bear with me because I have to use my I call it my spyglass. My, my nieces got a hold of my really good uh, magnifying glass when they left, I still haven't found the, the missing parts. But uh, thank the Lord they're interested in what makes things tick. <laughs> okay, now we're, we're looking at, uh, where did we leave off last time? Anyone tell me? Page five, number two, huh? Okay. So notice, uh, notice that also in verse eight, and this is, uh, we're looking at, uh, let's see, Paul prefers to uh, be home or present with the Lord. This is Second Corinthians chapter five, Verse 8. Well, let me tell you, we, uh, our neighbor o over here across the street from the church, his name was Thomas Simon. And he was here when we moved into the parsonage. And he passed away this week. And his wife had uh, passed away about five, six years ago. And uh, he was a good, good man of God. Uh, Thomas, pray for his family. He had no children, but he had some God children, and pray for them that everything goes well. Well, and, and Paul had suffered a lot, and he longed to go home to be with the Lord. But what must we examine when we have those kinds of thoughts? Is God through with us yet? Do we still have something to do? Yeah, we still have a purpose, don't we? And what is that purpose? What, what, what purpose do we as a children of God have down here before he calls us home? Okay, the Great Commission, right? Go ye therefore and do what? Make disciples of all nations, all ethnic groups. So all this ethnicity, uh, people uh, trying to pro uh, proclaim their, their own groups, God wants everyone to be saved. He wants us to declare the good news to everyone. Go ye and make disciples of all nations. And what else are we to do? Baptizing them in the name of Buddha, the name of Muhammad, the name of <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The, the, the sign up sheets in here, so that. It's in here. Addie has it. So that we're to baptize in whose name? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God in three persons. 
And we're going to have a moment of silence here because Sister Tipton has finally come to class. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and we got you on YouTube, Sister Tipton. <laughs> but only one name. Now, how can one name have three persons in it? How, how can that be? Well, see that beautiful lady on the, who's giving you the outlines? She's a person. I'm a person. But we have one name. I am the man, and she's my woman. Mert, you should have said amen, Mert. <laughs> amen. And think about it. You know, where I live, we have my granddaughter, my daughter, who's her mom, my son, Howard, and then Addie and myself. We have five people in that house, but one name. One name. How is that possible? Well, I'm not going to go over how it's done, but uh, how about uh, water? What forms can it take? When it rains, what, what form does it take? That's liquid. When it snows, what form does it take? What was that? Thought you said cotton. Okay, I say you can't. You spend too much time in the South. <laughs> so we have liquid, and then solid. And what other form can uh, water take? The yeah, ice, but it can evaporate. It can evaporate, and yet it's still water that was made by God, and yet. It, now, th those are poor examples. Uh, there are certain mystery things of God we'll never know. Uh, I need someone who's dark and good looking. I don't see anybody not that, not dark, uh, to read Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29. You got to stand up now, and, and Anthony will come and let you use the mic, but don't use that to make a political statement. Yes, uh huh. Now you got to stand now. Amen, amen. There are certain things about God which I believe we'll never know. Someone said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God, when you get to heaven, you won't have one question. You know why? You'll behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. The awesomeness of God. The ways of God are just beyond our finding out. I don't understand how the true and the living God will have his son to come down because of his great love for me. Have I merited anything to deserve God's love? Have I merited anything? No, it's because of what? Grace and mercy. God's grace and mercy. So Paul, notice, we're looking at on page five. Sister Tipton, do you have page five? I don't think you do. Yeah, let me give you page, uh, page five here. You see, I had a, a stapler, but my wife cleaned my room, and she moved my stapler, and I haven't seen my stapler since. I hurt you, Addie. Here you go, 
endorse. Endorse. Uh, if anyone takes this piece of art, you have to give me ten dollars. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think she was going to give it to me, but I should have kept quiet. <laughs> okay. I notice we're looking at uh, on page five, uh, number C two, that Paul in. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, he preferred to be home or present with the Lord. Notice, page 5, number uh, C2. So Paul wanted to be home with the Lord because who is there? In heaven. Who's in heaven? Our Father. Now, our Heavenly Father, right? Jesus said, when you pray, pray, our Father, and where is he? Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Now, hopefully, our biological fathers are there, too. But I, but I found one thing. That women... Uh, I've got to be careful with what I say, that women tend to be more spiritually minded than most men. And no one said amen. Okay, okay. Now, who else is in heaven? Well, our Savior. Our Savior. After Jesus rose from the dead, how long was he with the, the apostles? It was about 40 days, wasn't it? And then he ascended. He ascended on high into heaven. So if someone says, uh, we saw Jesus at this revival, don't believe it. Because until he comes... The second time, he's in heaven. Now, who else is in heaven? Our brothers and sisters. Now, hopefully, our brothers and sisters, our biological brothers and sisters, but, you know, our brothers and sisters in the faith are there. I was, uh, when my mother passed, when my uh, sister passed away, I I was just uh, mourning, and I, I, I was walking through the graveyard and saw a lot of names. And, and on some of the headstones, I saw one that said, Brother so-and-so, well in Christ. So well in Christ. So he wasn't well because he died. But if he's in Christ... What can his family sing about him? It is well with his soul. It is well with his soul. Okay. And then look at D. What else is there? Yeah. Our names are written in heaven. It's good to know that the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your name is written in heaven. That's why we will never have to face the great white throne judgment because everyone at the great white throne judgment, their names were not written in the book of life. But those who are saved, their names are written in the book of life. Isn't that good news? Notice you have a title deed to heaven. Heaven is your home. Someone asked me, if you were to pass away, what song would you want sung? I said, well, nothing I recorded. But uh, uh, I am redeemed. That's what I want sung. I am redeemed, bought with a price. But Jesus paid the whole price. If anybody asks you, what is it? Uh, 
just who I am. See, that's why I don't say it. Tell them, I am redeemed. Isn't it good to know that when you're redeemed, from that moment on, you belong to God and your citizenship is in heaven. Amen. Okay. And, and also, uh, notice under E, what else is there? Our inheritance is there. Our inheritance is there. And, and then, now notice, on that uh, picture I drew, uh, that's just to give us a picture that that crown of life, look what it contains. We'll be righteous. Middle song, none but the righteous shall see God. And why are we righteous? Have, haven't you done some bad things and said some bad words? Uh, my wife was talking to me and she said something. And I said a word that wasn't very popular with her. And uh, she couldn't quite reach me, but she was trying to. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it's good to know that our sins have been thrown into the sea of forgetfulness because of our personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We have a, notice, we have an inheritance. An inher Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. It has not entered into the mind of man, but God has prepared for those who love him. Now for those of us who've lost loved ones, dry those tears. It's okay to weep. We, we, don't, we can't weep, weep like those who have no hope. Because those who have passed away in Christ, they're right in the presence of God right in the glory, and all, and, and that's, that's where all of us want to go. Amen. Amen? Amen. And then, notice, under G, what is that? Yeah, our reward. Well, un under F, our citizenship. Now, where are we citizens in this world? Yes. USA, and also with citizens of California. Uh, but we're sojourners down here. This is not home. And we can get so tied up down here. We can, nothing's wrong with making, you know, we gotta have some water now, but to have your yard looking the best. Nothing's wrong with that. Anything wrong with having really nice furniture? No, nothing's wrong with that. Although I remember when I was a little kid and we had a, uh, Aunt Bob was her name. You go to Aunt Bob's house and you hit the carpet and you sank about, about four or five inches. And she looked at me and said, you see that couch over there? I said, I don't want you on that couch. You can sit on this one but you don't sit on that one. I said, I was a bad kid. When she went out of the room, I sat on that. She caught me. <laughs> but see, God wants us to know that, look, this is not your home. So don't, we have to build our hopes on things what? Eternal. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. And then notice our reward is there. And then our treasure is there. Notice, that's our home, and we should long to go home. But notice, don't take an early ticket. Notice, this is uh, the kind of heart attitude we're after, where 
we are more concerned about the eternal weight of glory than we are about the light afflictions down here. The eternal weight of glory is something, it's, it's, it's weighty, it, it gets through compared with the light afflictions. You see, what I'm going through now, I have uropathy and my feet are hurting. But this is a light affliction. It's a light affliction because it's one of those things. See, if I had, if I had ate like Mert told me to eat, doing all these things, I probably wouldn't have it. But now, I know this. Even though I have uropathy, I'm going to still accomplish some great feats in life. Okay. Now, that was a, a joke, but that's a, okay. Okay. Now, notice now the basics of heaven. I'm glad the pastor's here. Maybe he can help with these two words. Now, heaven is referred to a 550 times in the Bible, 550 times. There are men who've actually counted it. One guy said one, two. P people actually do that. And we're, 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 it's good that someone has. And notice the Old Testament word for heaven. Now, Pastor, do you know how to pronounce that? I think it's Shemay. And it means the heights, the heights. Remember that Disney cartoon that came out several years ago called Up? Well, that's where heaven is. Heaven is up. It's a high and holy place. And then the New Testament word, just no, see the word, I can't pronounce it. And it means Notice the meaning of it. It means that which is raised up high or that which is raised up. Now look at Colossians chapter 12, verse 2. Colossians chapter 12, verse 2. And Sister Tipton, we're using the last 10 minutes for questions. Colossians chapter 12. I'm sorry. It's not Colossians. It's 2 Corinthians. I'm, I'm really messing you up here. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I'm sorry about that. Second Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians 12.2. But we have someone going to read it. third heaven Paul is saying that someone he knows and we figure it's Paul he was caught up unto the third heaven and there are three heavens that are presented in scripture three heavens let's turn to page six now and we'll go over those three heavens Notice the first heaven, this is the atmosphere, atm atmospheric heaven. It is the space immediately above the earth. The space immediately above the earth. That is, excuse me, that is uh, the first heaven. You see that in Isaiah uh, 55, 9 and Psalm 147. Eight. We're not going to read those, but when you get home, just look at those. It, talk, it talks about the, 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 the first heaven. 
the atmosphere that God has created for us. And notice we're, there's a lot of talk about global warming now, that the atmosphere is going through something. I think it's going through something because judgment is coming upon this place. Now, I could be wrong. These could be just precursors, but uh, notice the fires, notice the storms. And in the midst of all that, fires and storms and heavy rain. And uh, notice those people who were killed near the White House by lightning. You know, strange things are happening. So the first heaven is uh, the atmosphere, the space immediately above the earth. And then notice number two, the, the second heaven. The second heaven, notice, includes the planets, the stars, and the moon. And so, someone read Genesis chapter 1, verse 16 for us. 16, Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. And this is the second heaven. Now, do you see the difference between the two? The first heaven is the atmosphere above the earth. The second one is outer space. made the stars also. That's the second heaven that God created. And notice with these new telescopes, what they're finding, they're finding there's so much out there and they think that they're disproving dispute, dis, dispute that God created, that somehow it came about from the Big Bang. My question is, if it came from the Big Bang, who was the Big Banger? Because how can nothing mate with random chance and produce matter which produces time? That, to me, seems more miraculous than in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God created, it wasn't made from random chance. Can I have an amen? Okay, all right. Now notice the third heaven. The third heaven. Notice that's the divine heaven where God dwells. He dwells there with A, his holy angels. His holy angels. And B, Who's there? The saints of all the ages who have been redeemed and will dwell forever and ever. So when I, when I think about Pearl, see I was on my way here when I got so sick there was a mass that developed under my ear and I couldn't move my head. I said I can still make it. I said, no, I can't. So I had to go into, uh, what is it, the urgent care. And then they said, well, man, uh, sir, there's about a two-hour wait. I gave her my sad look. I said, ma'am, I said, I just had heart surgery. I just had a defibrillator put in. And... This thing is trying to kill me. I was in in three minutes. If you want to know that look, I'll give it to you later. But uh, I know Pearl is all right. I got to talk to Pearl the day before she passed away. Addie and I did. And because uh, she loved Addie. Every time she'd come in, she'd say, Hi, Addie. 
And one time, one time Pearl came in and Addie was coming in and Addie would sit right where Mert sits or the one behind her and she and Pearl were talking and she sat right on a lady's lap. I'm sorry, Adi, I have to say that. You pray for me because when I get home, I'm going to get it, okay? So all the saints of all the ages are dwelling with God in heaven. All those loving lo ones that you, we say we've lost so many, we haven't lost anything. They're heaven's gain. They're in heaven. The saints of all the ages. That's good news. That's good news. Now notice now, there's a problem though with 1 Kings chapter 8, verse uh, 27. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27, when uh, Solomon was dedicating the temple and he asks, but the heavens of heaven cannot contain you. The heavens of heaven. That is, the third heaven can't contain you. And how can God dwell in a building like this? That's a good question, isn't it? You know how he can do it? God is spirit. And his spirit can dwell in this place. Why? His spirit is in each one of us. Amen? That inside of you, dwells the Holy Spirit. And will he ever depart from you? No, he will never leave you. He will abide with you forever, the Holy Spirit. And so you know what God said? Notice, how can we say that the heaven of heavens uh, cannot contain God and that Heaven is the abode of God. How can that be? You see my informative answer? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't have a clue. But you know what? God is God. And God, that's why whenever I, when I get up in the morning, I say, wow. He allowed me to wake up again, and I, I'm just waiting to see what he's going to do on this day. And then notice uh, number three, there is a sense in which heaven cannot contain God, and yet heaven is his abode. And we, we already read Deuteronomy 29, 29, right? That says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Let's see. But that which is revealed to us belong to us and our children forever. There are certain things we don't know. But you know what? I'm not going to write a book called God's feet are hanging out of heaven because the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. That'd be a wasted book, wouldn't it? God can do anything he wants to do anytime he wants to do it to whomever he wants to do it to. Amen. And then, now, now look, I, I need someone to read Romans chapter 11 verses 33 through 36. But whenever you think you have all the answers, read Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. I need someone dark and handsome to read that. Brother Evans, you're off the list. No, he's, you can do it too, Brother Evans. He's my friend. I was, yes, ma'am. Romans 11, 33 through 36. Someone stand up who hasn't read so that Anthony can give you the mic. Now, 
I know your names. Okay, uh, The ways of God are beyond our finding out. But I know this, that Jesus died. He was dead in that tomb. Yet, on the third day, by the power of God, he got up. And I know one day my mama is going to get up. I know one day all of those that I love who are gone are going to get up. Why? because his ways are beyond our finding out. I just love him and praise him. Do you know what I'm talking about? That the ways of God are just beyond our finding out. Praise him and thank him. Don't try to figure him out. Amen. Amen. So notice now, under C, there is a heaven of heavens where God dwells. Look at uh, number one, Isaiah 57, 15. God says, I dwell in a high and holy place. Notice, God has a place, a real place, a high and a holy place. That song, I'm going up yonder. I never did like that song, but it reminds me of funerals, but, but we are going up yonder. Yeah. It's up yonder somewhere. Yeah. Above all heights, above all glory. What that telescope sees ain't close to it. Not close to it. And then Isaiah 63, 15 tells us that the place where God dwells is called heaven. Heaven. Now, is he talking about the atmosphere? Is he talking about outer space? No, he's talking about that place way beyond that, that high and holy place. In fact, our adversary is called the prince of the powers of of the air. But he's not in hell. He's not in Hades. He roams about the earth, but he also inhabits the atmosphere. I'll get you the verse one of these days. And then notice number three. In Psalm 33, 14, the Lord looks from heaven. That is his dwelling place. I think it's Isaiah 55, 11 that says, for the Lord looks to and fro throughout the whole earth that he may strongly support those whose hearts are completely his. Notice, God is watching. Sometimes we think that you know, uh, God has got to show up. Well, God has shown up before we realize he's shown up. See, God is always working. 
His eyes move to and fro throughout the whole earth. Well, does God have eyes? The Bible uses things we can understand to describe how God looks, how, how he looks down upon us. When you, the Bible says God is spirit. And then notice Psalm 102, 19. For he looked down from his holy heights. That is, he looked down from heaven. The Lord gazed upon the earth. The Lord, isn't that something? To know that not only has he not abandoned you, but that song, if his eyes are on the sparrow, I know that he watches me. I'm sure he watches the pigeons too. Okay. Someone might say, why do the sparrows get? God sees everything. And then notice in Revelation 3.12 identifies God with heaven. And then uh, Matthew 5.16, we are told to glorify your father who is where? In heaven. Glorify your father who is in heaven. That's why we come to praise him, don't we? We come to praise him because... He deserves the glory. I don't know about you, but when I miss church, I, I, I just don't feel good when I miss coming to church. And Pastor, I knew you were having a rough time when you were out. <laughs> Amen. To hear, to be with the people of God, to praise together, to hear the choir, and... Uh, I even love to hear Anthony sing that his song in the morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. He sings it better than I do. <laughs> Amen. See, praise. Praise is what I do. If I can't praise God, what am I here for? And then Matthew 5.24 we are told uh, not to make oaths either by heaven, uh, for heaven is the throne of God. And we're going we're gonna to cover uh, in a little while why the people began to use heaven instead of saying God in, uh, during part of the New Testament. And we'll, we'll, I'll explain to you what happened. And then notice in 5, Matthew 5, uh, 45, it says, the sons of your God who is in heaven. That is, are characterized by what? In verse 44. Someone just yell it out. In chapter 5, verse 44, the sons of God, what, what are they characterized by? Brother Evans, you, you've been waiting for a long time. Did you find it yet? Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, I thought you were dozing off on me there, brother. No, Brother Evans is my friend. That's why I can. He's my friend who has more hair than I do. You're supposed to say, no, it's about a tie, about the hair. What 
What does it say? Yeah. We're to, the sons of God are to love their enemies, to pray for those who misuse you. You got to be a child of God to do that. God has got, has, 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 he has to change your heart for you to do that. Because some of these scoundrels here, if it wasn't for the Lord, we'd be hit people. Okay, and then notice uh, where are we now? So I lost my place. Number nine, okay. Matthew 6 1 tells us what about your father who is in heaven? What does it tell us about him? Matthew 6, verse 1. What was that, Doris? Doris, you have to talk like you're yelling at your children. Mm -hmm. So self-righteousness, we, we can't try to exalt ourselves because who's really righteous? The Lord is. Okay, let's, uh, and then Matthew chapter 7 verse 11 tells us that our Father who is in heaven will do what for us? Right, give us good things. Give us good things. Hasn't God given you some good things? I look at my wife right there. I remember when I was dating, and I, I know women can come across some scoundrels, but men can come across some scoundrels too. Mm-hmm. And I said, Lord, Please send me someone who's pleasing in your sight. And my sister, who passed away last year, she called me and said, I'm stuck. I need for you to pick me up. So I picked her up, and she had my future wife, Addie, with her. And she had schemed this whole thing <laughs> to introduce her to me. And I told her that was the best thing she ever did. God is so good. He'll, he'll fill your life with good things. Good things. Baby, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. You want to come over and give me a kiss? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> See, I'm, a, I'm in a lot of trouble now. <laughs> yeah, my Mississippi woman. Okay. All righty. Oh, gee, it's almost that time. We have one minute to go. But uh, let's see. God willing, next week we're going to speed it up and we're going to uh, go over uh,
finish up that heaven is a, a place and start a, up a different section about heaven. Okay, we have uh, 10 minutes to go. Are there any questions? Uh, now keep it short so that other people can have, answer, have their, ask their questions too. And I apologize for going so slow. See, that's a sign you're getting old, brother. Oh, God. Okay. All right. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Mm hmm. should do is get you the scripture but it, it shows us that notice where God is in the heaven of heavens Satan is a prince of the powers of the air he's down here in our territory our territory so this world now is under his control see evil men who reject Christ, uh, they're under his authority. And most of them don't think they are. Most of them would, don't believe that Satan exists, and that's one of his great advantages, convincing people he doesn't exist. See, people, the world will prepare movies about the devil, but notice they always present God as if God is handicapped or limping and have evil as something really and truly great. And uh, uh, that's why it's, it's good to have Christian authors and Christian movie makers uh, who can present the proper view of God. Uh, so hopefully that helps any other questions? Yes, sir. Well, they would always swear. I swear to God. I swear on my mama's grave. I swear. And God said, just said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't, I mean, on your mama's grave. You could have given that lie to somebody else before. And we're going to find out, God willing, next time how those kinds of oaths were developed during what we call the intertestament period, the period between the Old Testament and the New, often called the 400 years of silence. But see, God was not silent. God was still working, but there was no, no divine revelation between Malachi and the events in Matthew and Luke. And we'll, we'll go over that. It'll be, a, it'll be clearer then. Yes, ma'am. Those are just traditions. Traditions sort of like the president. Put your hand on your Bible. And yet, uh, they, they don't believe in the Bible. They certainly, you could, certainly can't bring it up. 
and yet, do you swear that you say, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth for help to God? And then at least the uh, person suing or the person being sued, one of them or both of them are lying. So, and truth, what did Kamala Harris said? Uh, we must yield to each person's truth as if there is no universal truth. There is no truth about God. There are truths about God's but the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It speaks of universal truth. Well, we're going to have to stop right now. And we'll, we have four minutes. We've got four minutes, okay. Any other questions? Just remember this. Heaven is a place where all those that we love are there or are headed there. But see, last year, I lost my sister. Then I lost my niece. And then in January, when I went to the hospital, I can't remember anything from, from the month of January. I can't remember one thing. All I remember, I do remember one thing, that after my surgery, this nurse sort of floated into the room, looked at me and said, my name is Blessed, and I've been sent here by Jesus to take care of you. Now, I can't remember anything else. But that left uh, an indelible impression upon my mind because I, I couldn't even move my arms. They had, they had my feet, because I was a, a fall risk, they had my feet all wrapped up and I, I couldn't move them. She came in and moved them, helped me to the bathroom. God is good. God is good. What do you say, brother? All the time, all the time. Yes, yes. Amen. What, what's the date again? Of August. Okay. Ninth, okay. Make sure you let's, let's pray for Brother Evans. In fact, let's pray for him now. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you for this class today, thanking you for the students that are here. Bless each one, bless each household, dear Father. 
and be with Brother Evans as he is planning to have another surgery on August 29th. Go before him, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, touch the physicians and every member of the surgical team. Let them, even if they don't know, let them carry out your will, dear Heavenly Father. And allow there to be no complications. Allow him to get through this, Father, and to come back and praise your holy and righteous name. Bless each one of us, dear Heavenly Father. In the strong, all-sufficient name of Christ, Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, you dismiss then. Make sure you sign uh, in on the sign-up sheet. Sister Simon has the sign-up sheet. And give Sister Simon a hand. She did a good job passing out papers. <laughs>